interested in making a difference and politics is really that place where you can make a difference. And climate change and action on climate change really is uh, so important. The question, the way it's been said about being custodians is really about us taking action for our children, our grandchildren, for future generations. Uh, the Australian Labor Party has a very uh, ambitious but I believe achievable uh, policy. If we are elected uh, that we can deliver uh, and it's, it, we have a 50% target for renewable energy by 2030, a 45% reduction in emissions by 2030 based on um, 2005 levels, uh, net zero emissions by uh, 2050. We also uh, are going to introduce an emissions trading scheme um, and we're, we're also looking at carbon capture policies which will include reforestation, uh, mitigating land clearing, uh, carbon capture on the land as well. Um, and so there's a whole suite of policies that are really important. We're also going to be implementing a, um, a new emissions uh, scheme for motor vehicles, higher standards for motor vehicles as well. A couple other really important things that we've uh, committed to, and that is uh, around the marine parks around Australia, um, we've, we're moving that to from 27 currently to 60 marine parks being uh, increased. Uh, and that's really the largest system of marine parks anywhere in the world, which is fantastic. Um, and the Great Barrier Reef, which is being damaged uh, by climate change, also by some of the chemicals that come out of the catchment areas uh, through the river runoff, uh, we've committed $500 million to address uh, and save the Great Barrier Reef as one of the natural wonders of the world. Um, it's really interesting because we have a policy that can be delivered in government that can actually achieve outcomes, and it's a sad fact that the coalition government, under the coalition government, emissions have actually gone up since they've been elected. And we're about <coughs> reducing emissions and actually handing over as custodians to our children and grandchildren a planet that they can live in. Thank you. And, um, the Labor Party has a policy in which there is a commitment immediately if we were to win government that the Immigration Minister would go to the UNHCR, the United Nations uh, Human Rights, um, Commission on Refuge, High Commission on Refugees, and negotiate immediately for the resettlement of the refugees from Manus and Nauru. Um, we've also committed $450 million to the UNHCR, um, which the coalition government has no relationship with, frankly. Uh, we're removing temporary protection visas, which have been used as a deterrent. Um, we, are, we are making sure that we uh, also, as part of that, become a leader in the regional protection framework and take a leadership role. Now, these are good measures. They're real measures that can be uh, put in place. I want to see the closure of detention centres. In fact, for the best part of a decade, I've been advocating for uh, an increase in the refugee intake, and which the Labor Party is doing. We are increasing the humanitarian visa intake as part of our commitment. Uh, and I also want to see more money for settlement services as well, because that's an important part of helping resettle refugees into this country. If you look at the international, and this is an international problem. Uh, just, I think yesterday, the UNHCR talked about 63 million displaced people in the world because of conflict, and about 25 million of those are in UNHCR camps. Now, what I will be advocating for, uh, if I am elected and part of the caucus and in the parliament, is that there needs to be an international framework that increases the quotas, not just of Canada and Australia. That's great. The Trudeau government is showing the way they're taking 25,000 more refugees. It's great <coughs> that we're going to take you know, another 27 or 100,000 refugees. But we need to do more than that. You need to have multiple countries that increase their quota and an international framework which means if you have 15 or 20 countries taking 30, 40, 50,000 refugees a year, then you really start to take the people, a million or a million and a half people from camps, uh, out of those camps year on year. Then you really start to make a dent on, on the problem that, that exists. This is a very tough moral and ethical uh, issue. It's easy to have slogans on both sides of politics. I know we have to stay positive, Tim. But what, what, what I want to do and what our party is doing is trying to find a way to actually provide settlement for more refugees into this country safely. And I also want that as well. My, my parents came from, actually my parents came from Egypt after the wars in the Middle East, in the late 60s. My dad was effectively a, a political refugee because he was persecuted under the government in place then. This is close to my heart. And it's very easy for people to throw around slogans and make accusations and all the rest of it, but I can assure you, if I am elected, I will be passionately advocating for these types of solutions. It's hard to do, but we have to do it. And it requires the international community to be part of this. That is the only way we deal with this international crisis. If we can meet at the climate on the climate conference in Paris, 
or in you know in Kyoto, and we can deal with climate change as an international community. We must, as an international community, do so for the refugees, the 25 million that are in camps around the world. And I agree. I mean, look, you know what? We we are. I outlined earlier our policy on climate change, which is very ambitious and achievable. We are bringing back an emissions trading scheme, which is a really important part of it, and our targets: 50% renewable energy by 2030, and a 45% reduction in emissions by. 2030 on 2005 levels. Um, and what really upsets me, frankly, is that under the coalition government, we have seen a reduction in emissions. We've gone backwards as a country. Now, I know our, our party's not perfect. People have lots of issues with the Labor Party and, and are upset about a many, great deal of things. But as I said earlier, with, with regard to implementing socially progressive policies on action on climate change, we can actually do this in government. And you need the Labor Party in government over several terms to actually put all of these climate change policies into place so that we can decarbonise the economy because this is a major transition for Australia. And we've done this before. We've, we've, we've modernised our economy in the 80s and through a difficult period and we made sure we had a social living wage for people, that people weren't left behind. We're going to decarbonise the economy if we win government and we're going to do so by not leaving the workers and their families behind. We've got a transition plan to move those people from coal-fired energy jobs to renewable energy jobs in solar and wind. We can do this, uh, and we seek your support in these elections to actually form government and achieve this for Australia and for the planet, frankly. Before I forget, we're placing the Libs last, so 1 through to 10 all the way up the ticket. Greens will come ahead of uh, the Liberal Party in the event that Labor Party preferences are distributed. I want to thank everyone for coming here tonight. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, you come out on a cold and windy night. Um, because you do believe that politics actually can make a difference and whether you vote on party lines or for a candidate of a party, um, you've got a really good opportunity to hear from all of us yeah. tonight. And I also want to acknowledge the other candidates because um, it's not easy doing this campaign. It's been long and hard. We've been at a lot of events together, a lot of forums um, and a lot of campaigning. And it's a big sacrifice uh, for families as well, for our families. And, and, and we all are here. We might disagree on how we might implement certain policies or on policies themselves or on ideology. But we all are committed to the political uh, fact that we can actually make a difference in politics, and that's a really good thing. Um, and when I say we can make a difference, um, I believe that the Labor Party can make a difference. I, I as a candidate, just announced um, on Friday a $6 million funding commitment to, to build a maternal health care centre to add to a build for a community hub on which Chief Rovers Council is supporting, uh, Sam is part of the council, we're going to try and get some money from Victoria Health, from a maternal health care centre, child care centre, a kindergarten, a, a, um, a, a children's library, a new library, uh, the Glen, Glenroy Neighbourhood House, uh, all of these things, and, and also a science centre eventually uh, for, for kids, all these things are really important for communities like Glenroy which are really uh, underrepresented and, and undervalued in many respects. The Labor Party was also deliver. Uh, funding commitments to education, not the $144 million that uh, has been cut by the coalition government, will also deliver uh, affordable housing through our negative gearing policy so young Australians can actually compete in the market for their first property, not their tenth. We'll also deliver, uh, importantly, uh, no $100,000 university degrees and deregulation of that sector. We'll also deliver an NBN that works. We're committed to 2 million homes getting fibre to the premises, not Malcolm's mess of that old obsolete copper uh, network. We're also going to deliver an arts policy, and Brunswick has the highest concentration of artists per square metre anywhere in Australia. I've met with many artists in Brunswick. An arts policy that returns independence to the Arts Council of Australia. These are all things that we believe in. These are things that we can impl implement in government, and I hope I have the opportunity to do so as a local candidate and member of Parliament as well. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Cheers. Finally, Sam.